this thing is a desert racing machine. What's going on guys? This is Carl with the Racer Red Channel. I'm out here riding my 2005 DRZ 400S. Anyways, I'm out here in Emmett, Idaho. As you can see, this is a uh, pretty nice little area that's shared among all kinds of people out here. A lot of shooting is done out here. And what I'm doing right now is a little bit of uh, pastime that we enjoy here in the West. And that is some squirrel hunting. You do have to have a hunting license. I have a three year hunting license that's a fishing license as well. And I've only got a handgun on me right now. I don't want to get to where they're shooting at me. Uh, generally speaking, you should not shoot towards or over any roads. Should have a hill backdrop. A lot of people don't follow that rule, so it's a little sketchy out here sometimes. But as you ride through here, you'll definitely see trucks. And this is um, during the week too, so you see a lot of people out here just plinking away, shooting at squirrels or whatever. There are a lot of animals in Idaho that can take you out. Mountain lions are one of the biggest, baddest ones. Pound for pound, they are one of the most effective. In fact, I think they are the most effective hunters. Pound for pound. And a mountain lion will come after people and your pets. So there are a lot of incidents here in Idaho of uh, mountain lions coming after people. There was one in the news recently. Two brothers got attacked by mountain lion. It's pretty brutal stuff, really. The thing is, like, mountain lions, you grab a hold of them and they can twist inside their skin and they're so agile. They have these retractable blades that come out of their hands and can tear you apart. Pretty insane how brutal a mountain lion is with the 400 pound bite force of a mountain lion. You double that and you have a brown bear with around 800 pounds bite force. And uh, a lot of people don't know that brown bears will come at you. They will come after you. And they either want your food or they want you to be their food. Which uh, a bear typically only eats meat for about 15% of their diet. The other 85% is gonna be plants and berries, stuff like that. So, but they do eat a lot. They need a lot of food. Uh, the trouble with the uh, mountain lion is it's 100% meat. That's all they eat is meat and they can get it. They are so effective at, at uh, getting their food. The unfortunate part is that can be you. So I have a rig set up for backpacking as far as my sidearm. And I have one set up for uh, just everyday carry. And the one I have for backpacking has a light laser attachment on it. Um, that way you can see what you're doing at night too because that's that's really important. That's where a lot of the predators come out. That's where things get real sketchy is at night. Anyways, I prefer the 6 hour P226 and there are a lot of reasons for it. It was not the winner of the military trials. However, it came in second place and it only came in second place because of the cost. Actually, price per gun was better on six hour, but it got beat by the Breda 92 because of the overall maintenance cost. There was some shady factors with that because there was a politician involved who uh, was affiliated with Breda. And Breda actually underperformed when it compared to the Sig Sauer by quite a bit. The Sig Sauer was shown to be 18 times more reliable 
than a 1911 and it fired on average 1200 more rounds before stoppages than the Beretta 92 which came in second I mean other guns aren't even coming close the Beretta 92 had some failures that uh, broke the slide off and flung it in the face of the shooter and the things there were many things like that that uh, convinced the Navy SEALs to use the SIG P226 so the P226 is more durable and it's the most reliable by far there were some issues when getting the 226 dirty the trials I think were in 82 or 83 and so they redesigned their frames with mud rails in 86 and 87 and uh, they called them mud rails basically the slide just had these little like wings on them to help get the uh, mud and sand and dirt out of your slide mechanism but uh, they they actually made the frames weaker by doing that on accident which caused more failures in, in those two years and so they went back to the regular style the military does a lot of things just based off of cost and the even the seals went to nine millimeter and I was listening to a guy discuss why they went to nine millimeter and it was first because of cost and because ballistics weren't that much different and the ballistics are absolutely way different especially energy at distance which is something that I really look at a lot of guns can perform inside of 10 yards but I want to know what it's going to do outside of that especially if I'm going to carry it um, in the outdoors and you can get hot loads on on the 40 caliber that can really uh, reach deep into an animal and cause a permanent wound cavity that is much greater than that of uh, a different round a deeper penetrating permanent cavity what I use are the uh, solid monolithic external hollow point rounds which it's it's so important to to understand the bullets that you're using and I don't use bullets based off of anything besides performance an exterior hollow point is generally barrier blind which is important when you're um, if you're using it for military purposes or for law enforcement or any of that um, any circumstance really home defense all of it but that's not really what's important to me the the external hollow point is not only barrier blind but they also penetrate deeper and uh, I use I use the deepest penetrating round because I want if a bear is coming at me or a moose or a mountain lion I want it to go deep and I want it to shut off the main computer as quickly as possible I'm not looking for hydrostatic shock I'm not looking for that when I'm talking about large animals I'm just looking for deep penetration and uh, large permanent cavity the polymer frame guns have taken over the Glock 19 is now the firearm of choice for the seals because of cost and it's only because of cost so they're not only using inferior rounds now at nine millimeter they're using a gun which is really nice I like Glocks I like them a lot 
but they're they're not SIGs. Of course, they said the Glock has better durability when it comes to corrosion resistance because it's all polymer. It's really hard to compete with that. SIG made their P226 with coatings that could withstand salt water. They did a really, really good job of making a gun that was durable. Not only durable, but had superior feel, superior accuracy. What is... Oh, this is going right up to a property line. Anyways, a, uh, a SIG generally has a higher bore axis. And so that's one thing that people tend to not like as much. I've shot a lot of SIGs and a lot of Glocks, and I prefer the SIG. The Glocks do feel nice, though. I've been bit by a lot of Glocks, too. My, I've got scars on both my hands from shooting Glocks. I'm getting my hands up in there. The higher you can get your hand, the better, but... The, uh, the slide starts cutting you, then probably should back off a little bit. So, a regular hollow point round is good, too. I'm not saying that those aren't good, but they definitely have issues, no matter which one you get, they have issues with getting through barriers. And a lot of people use rounds that break off intentionally. Uh, upon entrance. Those are generally not the greatest because the, the part that breaks off of the round won't penetrate deep enough to actually stop a threat. It'll just hurt a lot. And so you basically just sacrificed a lot of your, a lot of the mass of your round needlessly. A lot of uh, hollow points will have that same effect with a fragment. You'll lose a lot of the mass. But, there are a lot of hollow points that are really good. But like I said, all of them are susceptible to malfunctioning when they pass through barriers. Especially hard barriers like glass, things like that. Anything that will cave in the nose of that round, it'll cause the uh, round to basically act like a ball. Just regular ball ammo. And so, that's why Personally, I use external hollow points, and this is the P226, which is a beautiful, beautiful gun. It's got great texturing on the grip. It's got checkering in the alloy frame. It's got a good 15 round magazine. Actually, this is the 40, so it's got a 12. The Metgar has a 15 for the 40s. Um, has really easy breakdown, has forward serrations, rear serrations, this is safe by the way, has the front rail for accessories, super easy breakdown, has a 16 pound recoil spring there, has an interchangeable barrel with uh, 357 SIG, and this is honestly my favorite. I mean, I've always loved this gun. This is by far my favorite. Nothing even comes close in my opinion. Um, this thing just never lets you down. I've never seen one of these fail. I've got lots of them. So that one was the alloy model. This is a 9mm. And this is a stainless steel model. So this has a stainless steel frame as well as the slide. You really know you're carrying this thing. I don't see any squirrels at the moment. Let's see if I can find some. It's like a pretty solid spot for uh, squirrels to pop out. There's one there. It's a 50 yard shot. Like I said, under normal circumstances, I don't think I've ever seen one of these P226s actually have a failure. But uh, I've gone through an entire magazine. It's hard to tell on some of these, but squirrel hunting with a pistol 
It is not easy business. Definitely giving the squirrels a fighting chance here. Ooh, that guy came up pretty close. That guy's way far out there. <laughs> this thing is pretty accurate though. Even though it's not necessarily taking out these squirrels every time. It's getting really, really close. I can see the stuff right around the squirrel come up. Yeah, this is one of the greatest pastimes of the West right here. Like I said, if you get in a bowl area, then it's pretty, pretty safe. I do believe I got him on that last one. If not, then uh, definitely messed up his house. Oh, dang it. So close. If you stop in an area like this, the squirrels will uh, think they're safe at a certain distance. And they are right now. If you had a long rifle, it would be a different story for sure. Alright guys, well, I'm out of bullets. At least with my gun that I'm going to use for out here. Anyways guys, thanks for joining along. This has been a, another fun ride. It took you guys to uh, see one of the greatest pastimes of the West. And that is some groundhog shooting, squirrel shooting. I just say it's squirrel shooting. A lot of people call these groundhogs or whistle pigs. But I call it a lot of fun. Moving targets out here and they're a lot safer with me shooting at them with a uh, 40 caliber pistol than they would be if I had a long rifle, like a 22 long rifle. The uh, percentage of hits would be much greater with a rifle. Thanks for stopping by. I'll catch you on the next video. Peace. All right, guys, I just wanted to give my Patreon members a shout out. That'd be Lance Darnell, Jim Jolson Jr., Kirk Kinghorn, Daniel Rausch, Brian Thomason, Wade James, Moto Creek, Nathan Young, Jason Crowling. I really appreciate each and every one of you guys. Thank you. Ooh -hoo, ooh -hoo.